Hello and welcome, y'all. This is the Podvig, and I am Joel Dunn. Since this is the inaugural episode, I thought it appropriate to introduce myself briefly. I'm an Orthodox Christian convert from Southern Baptist Evangelical Protestantism, a husband, I'm a father of nine children, a novice repenter, an aspiring ascetic, and, by the grace of God, an ordained reader. Now, at the outset, I want to make this disclaimer. The reflections contained herein are aimed squarely and solely at my own podvig. I have no ascetic skills, tips, tricks, or hacks to peddle, no wisdom of my own to impart, and no personal spiritual understanding or application to convey through the words that follow. Accordingly, I often feel as though my own spiritual struggle is that of merely striving to cling to the tales of the vestments of those who truly possess their souls, that God, in his vast and ineffable mercy, might save me, a poor, vile, and unworthy sinner. And I also pray that he would see fit to save you too. So, in adherence to the admonition of the infamous Ficini, the Sicilian criminal, let us go back to the beginning. What in the world is a potvig? And where in the world does this concept come from? Well, let's talk about that. Podvig, the proper pronunciation of which escapes me because, well, I'm a native Texan, has been described as the cornerstone of Russian spirituality. However, it's also one of those terms that lacks an adequate English translation. It is derived from Old Church Slavonic and connotes a selfless ascetic and heroic exploit. Essentially, it is a purposeful struggling. It is precisely this expending of life for the sake of life that the term podvig inherently evokes. It is through such struggle that the fiber from which the fabric of the Russian ethical and cultural tradition has been formed. As an explicitly religious term, podvig has long served to express the disciplined holy deed, the rejection of the world. Thus, it has been preeminently illustrated in Orthodox hagiography, that is, the lives of the saints. Composed of equal parts humility and self-denial, and never presented lukewarm, the podvig is the supreme Russian expression of stalwart allegiance to a lofty and ultimately altruistic ideal. In this way, the podvig indisputably follows the axiomatic paradox of Christianity itself that the Creator would deign to die for the redemption of His creation. Often misunderstood by the world, such indefatigable continence may appear selfish, vain, prideful, or even insane. But, in due time, this supposed foolishness is invariably revealed to shame worldly wisdom. As St. Philaret of Moscow reminds us, A fish that is alive swims against the flow of water. One that is dead floats down with the water. A true Christian goes against the current of sinful age. A false one is swept away by its swiftness. Because of the ascetic nature of the podvig, it is, strictly speaking, a form of religious sacrifice. Since breath and body were created and given from God, It then follows that expending breath and using body in the service of God is by its very nature sacrificial. If you've listened to the Lord of Spirits podcast for any length of time, you'll know that sacrifice is a prerequisite of worship, which is sharing a meal with God. Therefore, worship by its very nature requires sacrifice. Indeed, St. Paisio says, if we ask something of God without making any sacrifice, it has no value. If I sit and say, God, please heal this person, without making some sacrifice, it is as though I am just uttering good words. 
Inherently, the Podvig has always evoked Christian ascetic connotations, as in voluntary sacrifice, suffering, self-humiliation, and martyrdom. Thus, a person's entire life may be viewed as his Podvig, a selfless fidelity to the preeminent cause. St. Philaret of Moscow, in his sermon on the birthday of Emperor Nicholas I in 1851, had this to say, Some people, by the word freedom, understand the ability to do whatever one wants. People, who have the more allowed themselves to come into slavery to sins, passions, and defilements, more often than others, appear as zealots of external freedom, wanting to broaden the laws as much as possible. But such a man uses external freedom only to more severely burden himself with inner slavery. True freedom is the active ability of a man who is not enslaved to sin, who is not pricked by a condemning conscience, to choose the better in the light of God's truth, and to bring it into actuality with the help of the gracious power of God. This is the freedom of which neither heaven nor earth are restrict. This is the purpose and aim of the Bodvig, true freedom. It is freedom from passions, from impulses, appetites, and lusts. It is freedom to love purely, wholly, and unreservedly God and all his creation. It is the endurance of hardship as a good soldier for the sake of a crown. It is the physical manifestation of spiritual circumcision. It is the rejection of consumption for the sake of communion. By diligently undertaking the Bodvig set before us, we may truly be one in God through Christ. Thank you so much for listening. Join me again next time as we each make our sojourn on the Bodvig that is our lives.